He's saying, but one thing I do, in other words, listen to me because I'm trying to give you some heads up. I'm trying to help you out in some tough spots. He's saying, forgetting what lies behind. And straining forward to what lies ahead. Now listen, I've said this to men countless, countless times over the last 11 years. When you come in here, I want you to forget about everything bad and everything good. I want you to come in here with a clean slate. God, you add to, but I'm ta- I'm, I'm going to lay it all down. So... 15 years, 16 years of being saved. And this word was spoken into my life again on Friday. That means it's for me too. And, and, and what, they, what they would say, they said, you've had a good run in ministry. But forget what you've did bad because you'll beat yourself up. Forget what you've done good because you'll rely on trying to keep doing it. And start reaching towards what God has for your future. Start stretching yourself into the new because God is always doing a new thing. But if you keep holding on to your old movies, your old ways and forms of entertainment, your own style of music, and you're afraid to let it go. You ain't forgetting those things that are from behind. You're still stuck in that idolatry in those places of self-gratification from the things that this world is providing for you. I got to empty myself. And I empty myself out by forgetting all that crap and all that stuff. Sometimes even the good things. I think it's good to be able to look back and examine and, and look at, at the places and the victories that God has allowed us to be able to have and to be able to walk through. But I can't continue to live in that. I got to live for what he's doing now and for what he's doing for, for down the road. You know, and one of the things that, that, that I struggle with at times is, is God has always blessed this ministry financially. We've, we've always had enough. We've never really had what it took to have a Ben and a her and an Aaron and, and all and, and all you know and salaries and pay and all that kind of stuff. But he's always provided enough to be able to do the work that he's called us to do. But when it comes to stepping out into a big investment or something like that, I'll struggle. You know, and, and the Lord was tell me this weekend he said don't worry about your finances I always provide and I always have so I have to forget that time we was down to $50 in the bank you remember Joy those times where we didn't know if we was going to have enough to make the payments at the end of the month And for weeks and for weeks, we was waiting to see if God was going to come through. And he would. He would come through in 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 an insurmountable amount of money through a check or through someone that we didn't even know from some town in some state that we didn't even ever, had never been to. It's pretty cool because Paul says, I press on. I press on toward the goal for the prize, not of this world. I press on toward the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. My goal isn't to become famous and popular. My goal isn't to try and compete with worldly means and methods. My goal is to be a discipler and a disciple maker. My goal is to fulfill the great commission of Christ here on this earth. Our goal is to advance the kingdom work. Our goal is to make it to heaven. To be content with what he allows us to walk in, in the seasons that he's allowing us to walk and move forward. 